Okay, grade 10, welcome to our second lesson in weather. We're going to be taking a look at the Earth's radiation budget. If you think about a budget, if you have to live with a budget, that usually means that you've got a certain amount of money to spend, and that amount of money has to cover your needs. Well, the Earth gets a certain amount to spend of radiation or sunlight that actually makes it down to the Earth's surface. And that sunlight, some of it's going to be absorbed to heat the planet, some of it's going to be reflected back into space, it's going to do a lot of different things. We need to take a look at what all those different factors are and how they are involved in creating weather. So we're going to be taking a look at a lot of different terms here. Now, when we talk about sunlight, we talk about something called a solar constant. That basically tells us that the amount of energy we get from the sun is never going to change. In our lifetime, which in astronomical terms is a very short blip of time, the amount of energy we get from the sun is going to be pretty much exactly the same. All of the energy that comes from the sun, that constant amount of energy, only one-fifth of it is going to make it to the earth. Okay, only a fifth, so that's not very much. We're talking about 20% here. So the rest of it goes off into space and, and is not available for us to use. Now, when that sunlight hits us, some of it will get absorbed and be used for warming, and some of it will get reflected. We have a fancy word in science for reflected light, and we call that albedo. You ever notice an egg white is called albumin? Albus means white. An albatross is a white bird. White things tend to really reflect heat. And albedo, and light for that matter, and albedo talks about reflected light. The lighter the object, the more light it reflects. So this is really important because of the amount of light that hits the Earth. There are places that are going to reflect more of that sun's energy than others. Any area that is light colored or smooth or shiny will have a high albedo. It will reflect lots of light. So in the summertime, if you wear a white shirt, it'll be cooler than if you wear a black shirt. If you sit inside of a white vehicle, the temperature won't get as hot as if you were sitting in front of a black vehicle. So light-colored objects have high albedo, okay? Now, the surface of the ocean can have a reasonably high albedo, but we also want to consider something special about water, and that water absorbs heat really slow and therefore releases it slow. So we want to remember that water absorbs heat slowly and releases heat slowly. And I'm trying to focus in on what you have in your notes, just like we would in class here. So that makes water a special thing called a heat sink. When the light that comes down from the sun hits the oceans, the oceans warm up slowly, but then they also release that heat slowly back to the planet. And if we didn't have so much ocean available around the equator where we get the most direct sunlight, the planet Earth would be much, much cooler than it is right now. In fact, it would probably be too cool for us to live on. This is an interesting graphic. This is a graphic that talks about the albedos in different places. The more red colors have the highest albedos. And you'll notice that in the northern hemisphere, we have lots of reflected light. What could be causing that? Well, hopefully we know that the northern hemisphere has lots of snow, and snow and ice has a lot of reflection, has a high albedo. So a lot of light gets reflected, and the northern hemisphere is, for that part, cooler than as we get towards the equator. The equator is much more green, lush vegetation, and that has low albedo. It'll absorb the heat. But why is it northern Africa has such high albedo? There's no snow there, and they get lots of direct sunlight. Well... This part of the world is covered in desert, and sand, being light-colored, has a high albedo. During the daytime, with the direct sunlight, the desert gets very hot. But at nighttime, when the sun stops shining, the temperature gets very cold. There's not a lot to absorb all of the heat that is there.
So we mentioned that we've got a constant amount of energy that we're getting from the sun. We call that our solar constant. And the radiation budget talks about how much of that energy that actually makes it to the Earth um, do we get to keep on the Earth to warm it up compared to how much are we sending back into space. So it's how much is absorbed compared to how much is reflected is our radiation budget. Now, when we get the sunlight and it's coming at the Earth, there's three ways that we move it. Conduction is heat transfer by touching. If you touch a hot surface, obviously your hand feels hot. We've all grabbed onto that hot pot before and our hands yanked away quickly as we try to avoid a burn. Heat can be transferred by touching. Now, we're not touching any of the surfaces of the sun, thank goodness. So we don't get a lot of heat transfer from the sun by conduction. Convection is the transfer of heat through the air or water. We definitely notice convection through the air and water because it sets up wind and it sets up ocean currents. We know that air moves from hot air to cold air areas and we can get a flow of air transferring because of that. We also can have heat transferred through radiation. Radiation is how heat transfers through electromagnetic waves especially if we consider the transfer of the sun's energy through space, it's transferred to us through radiation. Now, not all radiation is the kind that is considered, quote, bad. But heat is a form of radiation, light is a form of radiation, ultraviolet is a form of radiation, and a lot of the sun's energy actually comes to us in that fashion. So, of all the sun's energy that comes to us, some of it is going to be reflected back and some of it will be absorbed. If we receive more energy than we're sending back, the earth warms up. If we send back more energy than we receive, it cools down. In the summertime when the northern hemisphere is green and lush, we actually absorb more energy than we reflect and our temperature warms up. In the winter time, we are actually, with the snow, reflecting more of the energy and our temperature cools off. Now, this is only part of the equation. The other part of the equation is the angle that the sunlight's hitting us at. We'll talk about that in a minute. Another thing we need to consider is what is the heat hitting? We've talked about water molecules it has a high capacity to hold energy. Water is a heat sink. So water tends to bring heat in and hold on to it. So throughout the um, summer months, the ocean will build up a lot of heat, and some of that heat gets released back into the northern hemisphere as the ocean currents move that energy around the planet. This graphic here talks about how that sunlight is either coming in and being absorbed, if there are arrows in this direction, or is it being reflected with the arrows bouncing off? You can get an idea of how much of the energy is being absorbed and reflected. We notice that about half of the heat's energy is absorbed by land, about 3% by clouds, and 16 by the atmosphere. And then the rest of it gets reflected back into space. Some of it is reflecting because of albedo, some of it is reflecting by radiation. The difference between albedo and radiation is typically the wavelength that it's reflecting at. Radiated energy is usually reflected back in longer wavelengths, and this is reflected back in shorter wavelengths. Longer wavelengths result in more heating if we think about greenhouses, and we'll come back to that in a later lesson. Take a look at this graphic and see if you can use it to fill in this one that you have in your notes. We have one small problem on this graphic in that they said absorbed energy at the surface is 5%. It should have said 50%. So I'm going to get you guys to change that in your own notes to a 50. Absorbed energy is the ones that are downward pointing arrows and you can see the ones that bounce off things are reflected energy. Now, I say that the reason that we're hotter in the summer and cooler in the winter was in part because of albedo, and that is in fact true. Another factor is insulation, which talks about the direction and the angle that the sunlight hits us at. Sun hits the equator at the Earth almost directly. You can see in the image on the bottom of your screen here 
that a light beam hitting the Earth concentrates its light in one spot. And that involves at a faster rate of heating. If you've ever played with a magnifying glass as a kid and angled it until you got it to a fine point until you could get something to start smoking, you know that concentrated light can heat up pretty quickly. But if you spread it out over a larger surface area, like it does as the light hits the northern hemisphere, then it doesn't have the same ability to heat. In the winter time, because the angle of our Earth tilts us away from the sun, the sunlight that hits the northern hemisphere is spread out over a very large area, and we only get a small amount of heating because of it. That, and the fact that what it does hit is often covered in snow, reflects that energy that we do get back into space, and the Earth in the northern hemisphere remains cold in the winter. In our summer, because of the angle of the Earth on its axis, we are actually tilted towards the sun. So the amount of sunlight that hits us is on a much more concentrated area, and that allows the Earth to warm up and for the snow to start melting. I have a couple of other videos that I'm going to link below this video for you to watch to learn more about how the sun's energy is the beginning of forming weather on our planet. and once you've watched them, I'd like you to use what you've highlighted in our notes through this and what you've learned from the videos to answer the questions in task two.